Good morning, I'm Stefan Rudich and um, my talk is about electroactive materials and mostly I'll focus on instabilities in these materials and on the ways how this phenomenon can be used for our benefit. Uh, this work has been carried out together with my advisor, advisors, Professor Gal de Botton and Kovshik Batisheri. And Okay, so what are the electroactive materials that I'm going to talk about? Uh, first, there are soft polymers. The, the molecular structure enables them to undergo extremely large deformations, hundreds of percents. Next, there are dielectrics. Electrons in dielectrics are bound to the atoms and to the molecules, unlike conductors, where they can freely move. And when we apply an external field, for instance, a field in this direction, then they will become a little bit elongated in the sense that the electrons will spend a little bit more time there uh, than they used to, and so this part becomes negatively charged and this part becomes posit positively charged <coughs> and that creates a dipole. These dipoles generate the so-called Maxwell stresses. So how does the polarization phenomenon can be used for actuation? Here is a simple actuator. The top and bottom sides of the elastomer are covered by complete electrodes. We apply a voltage and the Maxwell stresses are induced and the material deforms. So what is the voltage that we need to actuate such device? Here is the relation between stretch lambda and electric field E. <coughs> and uh, let's take typical values of the electric constant and shear modulus. And we see that uh, uh, to get 50% of deformation, we need this huge amount of electric field. So this is the major problem, huge amount of electric field that we need. Okay, maybe we can compensate the electric field by taking a material uh, with higher ratio between dielectric and elastic constant. Um, unfortunately, this ratio is nearly constant from material to material. However, we think that the solution can be found. It may come from using instability phenomena, and another option is using of composite materials. So, consider a spherical balloon made out of a dielectric elastomer with inner and outer radii. The inner and outer surfaces of the balloon wall are covered with thin electrodes that enable to induce an electric field across the wall, and the balloon can, can be inflated with inner pressure, PI, and electrically excited with a potential. <coughs> uh, in this work we follow the theory of nonlinear electroelasticity where total stress is the sum of electric, uh, elastic, um, a Cauchy stress and electrostatic Maxwell stress. Uh, Maxwell stress depends on electric field and material at the electric constant. Uh, to specify a material elastic behavior we use the rather general Ogden model uh, which can be reduced to the widely used Naokin model. So we solve the equilibrium equation in the spherical coordinates. Multiple equations are reduced to Laplacian equation for potential. The inner surface um, is subjected to inflation pressure. The outer surface is stress-free. Uh, there is uh, zero potential on the inner surface and there is a potential on the <coughs> outer surface. So we use the spherical symmetry and define the principal stretches. This is an example of the problem solution. The relationship between stretch and normalized pressure here, H, is the initial thickness of the balloon. And we see that with increase of the infl uh, inflation pressure, the balloon slowly expands until a critical pressure is reached and further increase of the pressure leads to a sudden jump on in the size of the balloon to renew a uh, stable state. Uh, this phenomenon is commonly denoted snap through. Uh, we observe that uh, this effect cannot be recovered with the Neocan material, the dirt curve. Um, application of electric field reduces the critical pressure at which the balloon snaps. The next plot represents the correspondence of electric excitation and stretch, and similarly, electro. Uh, electrostatic excitation leads to expansion of the balloon up to a critical electric field and further increase in the electric potential results in the snap through of the balloon. Again, the Neocan model does not capture the effect. 
and when applied to a pre-inflated balloon, the critical electric field decreases. It's interesting uh, how the balloon thickness impacts the solution. Mm, the dashed curve corresponds to the thin wall approximation for the ratio of inner to outer radii equal to 0 0.99. The general solution overlaps with the approximated one, but with increase of the thickness, the difference increases. And for micro actuators, this actuators with a diameter of a few tens of micrometers, the thin wall approximation will lead to considerable errors. Let's examine the usage of the dielectric balloon as a micro pump. Uh, consider a balloon with inlet and outlet uh, valves. Uh, when the balloon expands at a pressure lower than a specific negative threshold pressure P in, the inlet valve opens and let liquid flow into the balloon. When the balloon shrinks at some positive threshold pressure P out, the outlet valve opens and liquid flows out. <coughs> uh, in this example, uh, the normalized pressure uh, P in minus 0, uh, 29 and P out 0 0.4. So the pumping cycle starts at point A, at which the internal pressure is slightly lower than P out and um, once the balloon is excited due to the electrostatic forces that act to shrink its wall the internal pressure drops to P in at constant lambda since the balloon cannot deform as long as both valves are closed at this po point the inlet valve opens <coughs> and the balloon expands while liquid flows in segment BC at point C, due to the instability, the balloon further expands to point D. This is a stable point at which the inlet valve closes, terminating the second stage. And now we begin to, decre to decrease the electric excitation. The inner pressure increases due to the elasticity of the balloon, as long as the pressure is lower than P out, segment DE. And at point E, the pressure reaches P out, the outlet valve opens and liquid flows out of the balloon as it starts to shrink. Mm, this process continues till the balloon returns back to point A through point F. And that completes the actuation cycle. And now let's get back to the simple actuator and substitute the homogeneous material by a multi-phase dielectric. Mm, in some cases, this may lead to an enhancement of actuation. As an example, let's examine a periodic metal with ellipsoid inclusions. And the only change in microstructure that we examine here is the angle of the, of the ellipse orientation. Uh, here, epsilon is, <coughs> is the main principal stretch. So we see that our microstructure may significantly improve the actuation. Uh, of course, her more complicated microstructure with different parameters can be considered and an optimal microstructure may be found. However, in this work uh, uh, we are mostly interested in instabilities and uh, to derive a condition for onset of instability we follow with um, little changes the work of Ogden and Dorfman. Uh, so we assume that there exists energy density function psi, um, from which uh, st stress, uh, nominal stress and electric fi field can be derived. And uh, uh, these fields can be defined in undeformed and deformed configurations. Uh, okay, we perform incremental changes uh, in the in these fields, and um, they can be written in uh, undeformed and deformed configurations. Uh, so the equilibrium uh, incremental uh, equations are written in this form, and they reduced. Maxwell equations are written in this form. And to specify linear linearized constitutive flow, we introduce the electrostatic model A, which can be defined in undeformed configuration and deformed configuration. And the electrostatic model A in the undeformed configuration are defined by energy density function. And th their counterpart 
and the deformed configuration uh, can be obtained from this transformation and then we have the linear cathedral to floor in this form okay we assume the solution of this form substituted into the governing equation and we're using compressibility constraint and we get the polynomial equation where the coefficients are functions of uh, electroelastostatic modeling so when at least one of the root of the roots is real uh, microscopic instability is detected so as an example we implement the condition to a class of laminated composites again we are back to the actuator and now we substitute the homogeneous dielectric by a laminated one and the laminate is characterized by lamination angle theta each face is characterized by the electric and elastic constants and the composite can be pre-stretched and electrically uh, excited um, we use interface continuity condition and define the phase deformation gradient okay and um, electric displacement and exact expression for the constant was an unknown constant alpha and beta are obtained from stress and electric field continuity conditions mm. okay the, uh, and they are function of mean nominal electric displacement and deformation gradient and since we have the exact solution we can obtain the electroelastic moduli and they provide us the coefficient of the polynomial equation and the onset of instability can be estimated uh, for example we assume that phases of the laminate are neocan materials and their behavior can be defined by the energy density function sorry and here is the plot of the unstable domain in the coordinates of inclusion volume fraction uh, cf and stretch lambda uh, the present example is obtained for composite with from a phase material concentration of 10 and the normalized electric excitation equal to unit mm, the unstable domain is symmetric with respect to uh, <coughs> inclusion volume fraction 0 0.5 and in the region when inclusion and matrix volume fraction are small uh, here and here the composite is uh, more stable. Uh, we know that for some values of volume fraction, uh, mostly around uh, CF 0 0.5, the material becomes unstable even being uh, pre-stretched. Uh, next, uh, let's look at the case when the layers are not aligned with the uh, with the pre-stretch. We see that the unstable domain is decreased, and for volume fraction around uh, zero and unit the composite becomes absolutely stable. A similar behavior we observe with further increase of the elimination angle. Mm, next we present a complementary example for the composite with inclusion volume fraction CF 0.2. The failure surfaces are plotted in the coordinates of elimination angle theta uh, and stretch lambda and the red curve correspond to pure mechanical case in the absence of electric excitation and these curves uh, correspond to normalized electric excitation 1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, first at the left side of the plot and the increase of electric excitation results in increase of unstable domain and next um, the right side of the plot here is, uh, the picture is a bit more complicated uh, here mm, uh, the increase of electric excitation results in a stabilization effect and um, in this region uh, the increase of electric excitation opens uh, new uh, angles for the instability so either we want to use instability phenomenon for actuation or we look for f look for ways to avoid it we can use this map in manufacturing actuators uh, as a final remark I'd like to mention that um, microscopic instability may occur first and should be considered so I come to the end of my talk and summarize uh, we proposed microactuators based on the snap through mechanisms of electroactive polymer balloons we introduced a general condition for the onset of microscopic instability and we implemented this condition to an exact solution for electroactive laminate composites and obtained the bifurcation diagrams. Thank you very much. <laughs>